Oh, God. Woe is me. Ben, what are you doing? Ah! Jesus. Dad. What are you doing up, Ben? Oh, I'm just uh, sitting, thinking. Have you been to bed? I went to bed and I uh, I got up. I had an awful dream. You sure it was a dream? I can't remember it, but it really shook me. I was going to come wake you, but I figured... Um, you could always do that, you know? I'm, uh, isn't there a certain age that you reach where you can't go to your dad? When you've had a bad dream, that's not true. I don't think they're. I don't think they're. That's well. Maybe. Maybe you're right. Y you know, Freud says that it's not. Freud, Schmoid. <laughs> who cares? Who's he? He's not some guy like me who loves you. That's for damn sure. Well, what would he say that my dream was about? Well, I think you need to give him a little more information. You know, <laughs> you're, you're thinking of Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. You know, you should get into the habit of writing your dreams down as soon as you wake up. Why? It'll give me something to read in the bathroom. <laughs> well, maybe if you give me, uh, if you start me off, say anything, and, and I'll see if it was in. Then maybe it would uh, trigger it. Um, garlic? Wasn't in it. Cilantro. No. <laughs> I know where this is leading. <laughs> A snack? Yep. Yes. <laughs> hey, Dad, you didn't tell me how your African mask making course went. It's going very well, and it, it's not at all competitive, but I think that I'm winning. Yeah. And I really wish you would not play with that uh, mask, man, because oh, that's, not a, that's not a toy. Well, I know it's not a toy, Dad, but I was yeah. I was up, and I needed to occupy myself, so I was just... Um... It's it's very powerful stuff, this... this uh... Hey, Dad? Yes, Ben. Yeah, please take that off. I don't want you putting the hey, mask Dad, on. Hey, Dad, look at I, me. Ben, I want you to <laughs> get the Ben. <laughs> I'm a witch doctor. <laughs> Dad, it's just me, Ben. Yeah, sure. I had the mask on. You probably don't remember some of the things you said while you had it on, I, do you? What did I say? I totally... You said I'm a witch doctor. Oh, my God, I never wanted to say those things. Yeah. You know, you can make fun of this all you want, but I'm I'm not abandoning this course, and I believe very very much in the power of these masks. So you can really channel other uh, s other spirits when you put on a mask. Is that it? Yeah. Or do you just look really stupid? Try to get back to sleep. You know, let me let me take the mask. I don't think that's going to help. No, I'm just going to hold on to it if you don't mind. Well, it, that, don't pull on it. You'll break it. Uh, okay, just give me the well, mask, I, and I'm going to go because you made you broke it. You look like a girl that I seen before or I just maybe it's your name although I don't know your name maybe she's not even listening to me I'll test her excuse me uh do you have any matches because I'm gonna light the building on fire huh nothing I thought it was time could you wait over there please I'll wait here I'll wait over there time and space doesn't matter to me I'm a traveling I'm a Magellan I'm a local Magellan I can go from here to over there I consider this rug like a small Pacific Ocean well, can I, can I just ask you a couple of qu quick questions? Yeah. First of all, have you seen any other therapists? Um, yeah. Okay, and don't let the brevity of my question influence the, the length of your answer, you know? All right. J these are just things I need to know for insurance purposes. Oh. I, w I saw one when I was uh, nine years old. For most of my year of being nine, I saw a psychiatrist. Was that your idea or was that your parents' idea? It was my parents' idea because of I, I have a tendency to over... Well, this is only from other people's angle on it. They might You might say I overthink situations, but I don't think that I overthink situations. I just think... I'm not saying that the rest of the world underthinks. I'm not being arrogant. I'm just saying they made me go because they thought I was over... Should I just tell you what the situation is rather than... Please. I realized as a young boy that most people die when they're in double digits. You know, most people don't die before 10 and after 100. So I was 9, and I was going in. I was going You're in. You're about to enter your double digits. Yes, and it was freaking me out. I was nervous. I couldn't sleep, and I, they asked me what's wrong, and I told them, and then that's when they had me go to a psychiatrist. I don't know if it helped, you know. I turned 10 anyway, and uh, it's a true thing, you know. Is there a, it's a, is there a history of longevity in your family? Yeah, with the older people there is. Why did you stop seeing Dr. Glassman? My parents thought I was more relaxed and I was more sociable. And what I did was I faked being normal to the point of they said I didn't have to go anymore. How did you act normal? What, what, what did you think normal was as a nine-year-old? You know, helping with the dishes and mowing the lawn and smiling and not telling them what I was really thinking. Because it's just... just picking the cat up and whipping it through the picture window and lighting the garage on fire and drawings with knives and everything. I'd show them the trees and the lake. Oh, see, isn't that good? See the boat on the water? Good. But my real paintings in the closet, you know... Didn't show them? No. They would make uh, something look like something else. Not good with analogies. That was fine. Tell me your earliest childhood memory. Uh, I was uh, four months old. 
I realized I had the full power of speech. And there was a nurse came in, and I said a complete and whole sentence to her. I said, do you mind shutting the window? I think my feet are getting cold. And her reaction was so horrifying that I realized I better wait at least 10 more months before I do this again. I'll never forget that, nurse. Heather or something. And you, how about your earliest memory? That, well, that's, that's not really appropriate, Stephen. This is not about me. That just makes my imagination run wild. Scary. Hey, there's uh, Mr. Mask, Dad, looking what, right at us. What do you think? Well, for all I know, this, this one could uh, really suck. Thanks. You know, thanks. Well, you know, it's just a hobby, really. It's a fun hobby, and no, it's just hobby. a wonderfully creative outlet. Uh, does it light up? No. Oh. But masks can be very powerful. A Someone behind a mask can be whoever he or she wants to be. Oh, like a bank robber, right? Well, yeah, I guess. See, knowing who you are isn't important. What matters is finding out who you can be. What the hell was that? I'm quoting my teacher now. But really? The, but it's true. So when you put the mask on, you can let the inner spirit out. Mm -hmm. Because you're not so worried about inhibitions. It's, it's a form of, of self-exploration is what it is. You know? yeah. And really a study in personal growth and discovering who you can be. And it's really been an enormous adventure for me. Yeah, know? do you know why people wore masks um, you know, hundreds of years ago? Why is that? They were ugly. Well, I really feel like it's it's changed me. Not just no, the mask, no. it's the wearing of the mask, but just the making of the mask and, and using my own hands to do that, you know? Sometimes, Laura, uh, is anyone else here? No. Well, sometimes when I'm wearing the mask, it ha I actually wait, feel Wait, wait. Dr. Katz? Yeah. Is this something that I'm not going to want to hear? I think so. All right. I just wanted to know. Yeah, sometimes when I'm wearing the mask, I actually feel more in touch with my feminine side. Oh, you were right. Mark Schiff for Dr. Katz. You don't have to take sides. When I was growing up, my grandparents lived with us when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Grandmothers have the biggest underwear on the planet. Sure. This stuff is huge. And all she did all day was soak the stuff in the bathroom sink and leave it floating there for like months. I go, Grandma, it's alive. Little bubbles coming up out of the thing. This stuff was so heavy, she would hang it from the shower rod. The thing would bend the shower rod. All night I'm trying to sleep, I hear this thing dripping like... I'm yelling, ring it out! Ring it out! My grandfather, too. My grandfather came from the old country. Where is this place? And they have stories you cannot prove. He told me he moved to the United States when he was two, by himself. One of the things when I was growing up, my mother always hated cleaning up anything when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. She always said the same thing. You know, Mark, I am not your maid. In my head, I'm thinking, yes, you are. Somebody's been cleaning up. It has been me. You ever get a check in a restaurant and they leave something off your check? Yeah. But somebody at the table always gets really nervous. They always go, shut up. They left the roast beef off. We'll walk out slow. Mm. Or sometimes you go out with eight, nine, ten people, you get that check, everybody gives the money to the one person. This guy always gets screwed. The bill's a hundred, he's got four dollars in his hand. Everybody's outside going, let's go! You know, one of the great things about being married is that you learn a lot about yourself. Sure. And you get weird questions. The other night, four o'clock in the morning, I got up to go to the bathroom. I walk back in the bedroom. I'm in my underwear, my eyes are closed. She goes, where were you? Four in the morning, my underwear, where were you? I went hunting. Mm-hmm. You ever wake up four in the morning, look at the alarm clock, and immediately start doing math to figure out how much time you have left to sleep? And I do better math over dead sleep than I do in the middle of the afternoon. You know, you ever wake up like, three hours, seven minutes. 30 minutes, seven seconds. Laura! Laura! La, la, Laura! Stop it! <sighs> you know, I didn't even write that. I just made it up. Can you, Mark, excuse me one second, please. Hey, Ben, hey, what is going on here, Ben? Is this... <sighs> ben, where are we? Senegal? See, already you're way off base. Dad, you're in, in my office. I have a patient in there. I'm sorry. He doesn't find this either musical or amusing. Was that loud? Yeah, take off your mask. <sighs> sorry. Did you make that? No, I bought it. <laughs> I glued the letters B-E-N on the top. Ben, did the bongos come with the mask, or is that extra? Extra 150. Uh, what number did you dial? Oh, Ben, Ben, I thought you was a big scary monster for a second. The mask doesn't work on the phone as well as it does in person. But you knew I was wearing it, didn't you? Well, I uh, just assumed... Wait a second, wait a second. Am, yeah. I, am I wearing it right now? Ready? Yep. Arr. No. See? Am I wearing it now? Rawr!
damn cock. I can't understand you because of the mask. I was wearing it. See, when you wear it, it's a little bit better. It's liberating, isn't it? Well, it's not as seeped in the tradition as yours is. Mine's made out of a box and some glue. Well, then it's your first homemade mask. You know, don't be so hard on yourself. And there's a slight problem. What's that? It's stuck to my head. Jeez, I wonder how long the silence is going to go. Just take everything in. <clears throat> Excuse me, you know what time it is? No. Thanks. Total fake question, just to check your hearing. I have it made, man. I have it made. Stephen, I'm going to say a couple of expressions, and tell me what they mean to you. All right. Take it with a grain of salt. What, what does that mean to you? Get out of here. Okay. All right. What about people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones? That always confused me. You know, if you were throwing stones in any house, it would be damaging. You're two for two. How would you interpret a rolling stone gathers no moss? Can't. And this is part of a cognitive test, Stephen. Can you spell the word world backwards? From where? From where you are. D-L-R-O-W. That's plenty. And I, I actually don't believe the dreams are as significant as some of my colleagues believe. Really? Yeah. I, I agree. I agree. There are different schools of thought on that. Yeah. yeah, there are three different schools of thought, and I couldn't get into any of them. Sheesh. You know? Well, you know what Freud said. What? He said it's the dream or not the dream. Well, no, I didn't know that, but I did know that he said the dream is the life of the mind while asleep. Say that again, Slow. You know where I read that? You know no, where I got where, that? Where'd you get that? We got, you know, we got those new Freud napkins. Didn't you haven't seen those? No, Freud it, cocktail napkins. Yeah. Great idea. Even if you're making it up, it's a great idea. So if someone has a drink and they have like a little Freudian slip, you just wipe it up with them. <laughs> Easy. Oh well, you know, I, the weirdest dream I ever had. I dreamt that parallel lines do meet, hmm. but they're discreet. Oh man. And then there was another dream I had about a, about a soap opera that I saw as a kid. I was homesick one day, and I used to have a dream about this soap opera. Really? It was very scary. What was scary about that? Just the quality of the acting. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying, Dad. All, all I know is I'm really tired, but I can't sleep. Is, is, is it the dream, Ben? I guess so, but I, I still can't remember what it was. I have a quick flash of something that was in this dream, and it yeah. was, it was uh, well, you were in it. Uh, how'd I do? Well, that's it. That's it. That's what the dream was. The bad dream I had. That was the dream. Okay, Ben, calm down. That was it. That was, I had this dream I was trying to kill you. Well, that's... that's. You know what that means, don't you? It means that... Well, it means that... Uh... I'm going to have to kill you. <laughs> Jeez, I'm looking for another interpretation. <laughs> you better find one Why quick. Why don't you just beat the crap out of me and we call it a day? <laughs> All right. Ben, that's a, I have dreams all the time where I'm trying to kill you. Is that true? Yeah, I think what's important is not to be uncomfortable with those dreams. Just sort of and just enjoy them for what they are. Jeez, but that's a that's an awfully bad dream to have about your own father. Was this something in the dream that that was uncomfortable for you to see or to feel? Dad, punch out, will you? Get off the therapy for two seconds and talk to me like a man. You know what the most obvious interpretation of that dream is? What's that? You don't like me that much. <laughs> I guess you can. But I'm not willing to even consider that one. I'm going to go with the more uh, traditional interpretation, which is that uh, you really don't like your mother. Yeah. <laughs> In your dreams, how do you kill me? I hire an assassin. <laughs> You're such a coward, Ben. This guy was good, though. Total pro. You know you know how you die in my dream? Yeah. Lethal injection. <laughs> <laughs> did I inject myself or did you? And no, I injected you. Into it. I told you it was a polio vaccine. How old was I when you tried to kill me? Uh, first time? <laughs> yeah. Ten. And then every year from then on. You know what? I cannot wait to go to bed now and think of a new way to kill you. Let's race. <laughs> All right. Guess what? Yeah. I feel uh, closer to you somehow. You know what? I, I feel the same way. And I'm so glad that we can we can have these kind of frank conversations. Yeah, I mean, you don't... I never realized how much talking about killing you would make me feel so much better about my life. And the same goes for me in double. Yeah, well, I double more than you because I'm better. Yeah. Just sleep with one eye open. That's all I'm saying, Dad. Watch your back, Ben. Yeah, you, you watch yourself. Good night. <laughs> I actually went to see my doctor recently, too. You know, I had to get a physical. How about you? But doctors have this power. Doctors can open up any door and just go, get undressed, I'll be right in. Don't you wish you had that power? And doctors make you sit on this table with that white deli paper underneath you. Mm -hmm. I usually bring a little pickle. I sit next to me on the table there. And they give you these forms to fill out, put down things like emergency phone number. I always put down 911. Well, you can't go wrong with that one. And they ask you what kind of diet you're on. You want to get them nuts? Make up the most horrible diet. Well, doc, for breakfast, I usually have a dozen eggs, four pounds of cheese... 
Then I smoke up a couple of cigars and I jog uphill for an hour. Then I come home, I have a box of salt. Then I get some lard and I actually rub it right on my heart. Mm. I have no energy, Doc. I feel like the life has been sucked out of me. I'm Jewish and I tried lifting weights, but the truth is that Jews don't lift weights. They say to people, would you help me pick that up, please? Mm. A lot of things Jews don't do. There are no Jewish rodeo stars. That's true. You never hear things like, Morris Greenberg got a shoot eight. Go get him, Mo. With his mother running behind him going, get off, you're going to fall. There are no Jewish bank robbers. You never hear things like, hey, put your hands up. Get on the floor. Get up, you'll get dirty. Stephen, what about your sexual desire? Would you say that that fluctuates? Fluctuates from extreme to very high. Back and forth. Like a rabid sparrow trying to get out of an attic. Trying to find the window in the end. Go, go, back and forth. Back and forth. So it's good then? It's good and frustrating simultaneously. Are you able to sustain a relationship with a woman these days? The longest relationship I've had is uh, four months with a, a woman. Is that ever? Or is that just over the last couple of years? The last couple of years. They seem to be getting shorter. The longest one I had was six months and when I was in ninth grade. I went out with a woman. She was 31. And I was a Boy Scout. I told her I was in the Air Force. She wasn't very intelligent, but she was something. She was passionate? Passionate. She was had her own place. Did your parents find out about that? Yeah. When I kept asking them to, to drive me to Hanscom Field, then they figured it out. They waited one time. They saw me like go in the officer's club and out the other side and get into a 72 Chevy with this blonde woman who lived in Stoneham. She was a, an architect or a a shoe salesman or something. We didn't talk a lot. Oops. You know what the music means. Our time is up. Her name was Heidi. Her name was Heidi. Hey, uh, you want to uh, put on the masks and uh, act out? I'm always up for that. Let's just do sock puppets. <laughs> You're getting so lazy. Uh, you know, I just was sick of making the mask. I just figured, put a sock on your hand. That's so much easier. Okay, but I'll, I call lamb chops. <laughs> <laughs> that has got to be the the most brilliant uh, production breakthrough. You know, she's parlayed this sock into a multi-billion dollar industry. That's a sock? What did you think Lamb Chops was? Holy God, that's good. I had no idea it was a sock. I thought it was yeah. part, part of her hand. Someday they're going to clone socks. <laughs> mm.